Hi, I'm Peter Capaldi. I play The Doctor, and you're watching EMS Productions. Thank you, Peter. And no, I'm never going to get tired of that intro. <laughs> Absolutely not. Welcome along to another Doctor Who review video. Today I'm starting the sort of series of reviewing all of the Series 9 episodes. This is sort of Series 9. It's on the Series 9 box set so I thought might as well do it. It's a good episode so I thought I'd start off with Last Christmas. So coming into Last Christmas we come off the back of Death in Heaven which actually I reviewed a couple of weeks back. Check that out if you haven't seen it already. Um, so it kind of follows on nicely reviewing this first. But um, So it starts off, well we come off sort of the Doctor and Clara lying to each other basically and they're both feeling like they've done the right thing but actually they've both done the wrong thing and apparently six months have passed which I've forgotten and seems more difficult to believe when this it was only six weeks after Death in Heaven this episode came out so it was kind of stretching it a little bit we're trying to push it back six months but there you go we had Santa and the TARDIS of course at the end of Death in Heaven I'm guessing that was just a dream sequence or something I can't it's, it's confusing isn't it um, but yeah, so then we get to Clara with Santa and co on the rooftop. Yeah! And they're already dreaming. But we don't know that yet. Spoilers. They're already dreaming. And we get Santa, by played by Nick Frost, who has the right name for Santa. And I have to say I really like him as Santa, actually. Wow, we're talking about Christmas so much and it's, it's March. Okay, but anyway. So yeah, Santa. Nick Frost, he's pretty, he plays it sort of funny but serious if you like. He's sort of a little bit of humour in it, but he also plays it fairly serious and it's quite funny seeing sort of the Doctor's dislike of him if you like and all the sort of banter through the episodes and stuff that they have between each other about how, well, he's sort of saying the Doctor isn't real and everything and it's sort of a nice little sort of chemistry between the two of them. And you've got the elves, of course, as well, which I can't even remember the names. What was it? Um, um, apparently they're called Ian and Wolf. Tell me if you actually knew that, because I literally... I had no idea that they were called that. They're just the elves. One of them's obviously Dan Starkey, so Sons of Strax, who a guy I like, he's a nice guy. And yeah, they played it pretty well. Nice little bit of sort of a few comedy moments, because they're very short. It's very easy to make them comedic, as you'd imagine. So then obviously once the Doctor returns, takes Clara off because he can and something bad's happening, I can't even, was it like, yeah, something like that. Um, and then somebody cut to this random base in the North Pole, I think it was, yeah. And suddenly we get lots of characters that we don't really care about that much. And Shona does a little dance, because that's about the only person I remember the name of from the main, like, crew. And, she knew, and everybody thought she was going to be the companion, well, that really didn't turn out, did it? It really didn't. But, so we get all that sort of stuff and then we end up in another dream later on, don't we? And it all gets a bit confusing. I'm sorry, this video seems to be meandering a bit. I like the episode, but for some reason I can't really think of that much to talk about it, frankly. Because all the main characters just sort of... There's nothing special about any of them the four sort of crew members they're sort of scientists but actually they're not scientists as we find out at the end they're all just normal people which is probably why they're not that exciting or interesting and so they just sort of are in the episode do the odd interesting thing Michael Troughton his character I can't remember who his character's name is but he's Michael Troughton Patrick Troughton's son obviously he dies because he's an idiot which was fairly clear that he was a bit stupid <laughs> So they killed him off just because, yeah, let's kill him off one character because that's how it works. And one thing, of course, I shouldn't mention is the return of Danny Pink, everybody's favourite character from Series 8. Yeah! Gotta love Danny Pink. <laughs> I mean, was this cam was this sort of appearance really necessary? Cause you can see how it fitted with the plot, but it's just sort of... I thought we got rid of Danny Pink because he's just not a very good character, as I've, I've discussed this all before in... The Death and Heaven review, Dark World of Death and Heaven review, that he's just not a very well written character, not a very, not meant to be a really particularly likable character, which really doesn't help his sort of 
story or making help the story at all and making it interesting for us to watch because he's just sort of well he says like I wasn't saving the world I was saving Clara or the rest of you just got lucky or something and it's just like you keep thinking that but it's not true is it let's be honest you're just trying to trying to make it feel like you didn't help the doctor because you really don't like him very much and well, Clara's always going to like the Doctor, so you could just got to accept it. But you're already dead, so it really doesn't matter. And it's nice that... Well, actually, yeah... I quite like that sort of dream sequence in Clara's house. With all the you are dying on the blackboards and stuff. And I really like the direction that she'll come on to a bit later, but... That's all sort of... Really well done, and... And it really gives a good sort of, almost sort of... Creepy horror film style element to it. Particularly with the music added in as well where it really makes you feel sort of quite creepy like Clara is gonna die she is dying but we don't sort of but she doesn't really realize it or want to realize it because obviously she wants to be back with Danny that is but Danny says just have your five minutes of me give me your five minutes and then you can have 23 hours 25 minutes of the day all for you but do you think she really did that do you think she kept the five how long do you think she kept the five minutes for maybe three weeks four weeks it was so yeah, that was Danny. He came back. Luckily, he didn't come back to life like Moffat loves to do with every single character ever, pretty much, that was relevant. So it's a good thing that Moffat didn't bring him back properly and that we'll never have to see him again. So, bye Danny Pink. I'm never going to mention you in a video again, hopefully. Unless it's a Series 8 video. Then I might have to. <laughs> so, but yeah, I won't. I won't I'll, I'll, I'll we'll try and avoid him for now. So now the main sort of alien creature thing from the episode, the Cantrafari, I, 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 something like that, dream crabs, we'll call them dream crabs, they're the easiest thing to remember. And they're, I, I haven't seen Alien, but apparently they're a rip off of that. I really should watch Alien. But apparently they're a rip off of the face or something in Alien. So it's a little bit sort of lazy for a Moffat just stealing ideas, but it made a good episode. Obviously it was basically a cross between that and Inception, which I have seen. That's a great film. And it kind of took quite a few ideas from Inception at least that I saw with the whole dreams within dreams and you're dying in the dreams and all this kind of stuff. Which, although it was reused from other stuff, I think it worked well. And also of course the dreams concept kind of comes from Amy's Choice a little bit as well. That's when that was used then, where there was like... Actually, like one world, one world is real and one world is a dream. But actually, they're both a dream, which is kind of this, like we're out the dream. So clearly, we're back in the real world. But actually, we're still in the dream. But we're back in the real world. Actually, we're still in a dream. So it's kind of rather than have to choose between realities and Amy's choice. This is kind of sort of are we back in the normal world yet? Are we back yet? Are we back yet? No. Yes. Yes. No. No. Finally, we're back. So yeah, the dream crowds make quite interesting, and they're sort of suckery down on people's heads and stuff and you had all those people in the infirmary actually it was the main cast wasn't it in the infirmary the crew um who we suddenly realize or the doctor suddenly realizes that actually they're all the they are all the crew the real crew and they're not just some extra crew that were there before and died and we're all they're all still dreaming and it's just dreams 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 and so i should probably mention the direction of this episode which I had to look up who it was, but it's a guy called Paul Wilmshurst, who apparently directed Kill the Moon and Mummy on the Express. Second one's good, first one not so bad. But I really like the way that he sort of gave that sort of dreamy quality to all the all the story. Hopefully there'll be a few screenshots up, but sort of particularly using the Christmas the sort of Christmas lights and the lights in the background, they'd be completely out of focus, so it's just this sort of speckly light in the backgrounds, which I thought gave a really, really good effect of sort of this is actually a dream. And it used that throughout the episode, this really sort of almost sort of soft focus kind of idea where it's all sort of really blurry outside of the main character looking directly at the characters all very very blurry around there to make it sort of look more like it's actually a dream which obviously was but I thought that was really well done in the direction there and also sort of the horror elements particularly with Clara under the table when the dream crowd is about to just sort of go on her and that's really sort of well shot to sort of mixing in with horror sort of ideas because this is somewhat of a horror-ish story it's kind of a base under siege, with a little bit of horror added into it to make it sort of a little bit different. A hybrid! Whee! Hybrid jokes for the win. Um, 
so yeah, I thought that he did a really good job with that. And wow, we're getting through this in record time. Okay. Well, I wanted to keep these reviews a bit shorter, so. Well, the other. Is there anything else before the ending that I haven't mentioned? Um, no, the set's quite nice, just sort of a snowy base. I was reading in the Series 9 Facts, yeah, you get those with the box set, that apparently the base was meant to be nonsensical and not make sense and be all sort of a mix of alien technology from different worlds, different times and stuff to sort of make it unrealistic and like it isn't actually real because it obviously wasn't. So I thought that was quite a sort of a good thought they put into it to really sort of create it really dreamy style to make just making it all sort of subtly hint that it's actually a dream the whole, the whole way throughout. And then we get on to this last sort of 10 minutes when we get the sleigh ride, the Doctor finally being happy for the first time since he was Matt Smith pretty much. The first time he's probably, it probably went a little bit over the top compared to his Series 8 character with the sort of, I'm riding the sleigh, it's amazing, I'm so happy, which he hasn't really been anywhere close to the whole of Series 8 and then suddenly we just sort of get that. So it was a slightly out of character moment I think. Obviously he was playing it a bit nicer in Series 9 so I think that sort of works more when you look at it in the context of Series 9 but at the time it felt a bit of a change, too much of a change of pace, sort of too much of a too happy Doctor after he's been all grumpy, sad, miserable, am I a good man? That was a terrible impression and all this kind of stuff that we had for Series 8 so yeah, if you, if you watch it now it seems that it makes more sense because of how the way his character developed, but at the time it didn't work so well. But there you go, it's Christmas, I'm sure that's what Moffat thought. It's Christmas, I can do what I like, let's make Happy Doctor and sleigh ride with Santa. Because we can do anything, even though it's fairly similar to the old shark ride from Christmas Carol in 2010. Series 5, that was, end of Series 5. Which, that's pretty solid as well, but anyway. So then we get to the end, or the well, all the characters go back to their own places from the sleigh and we actually sort of we get those sort of 15 seconds on each of them that's actually in the real world for the first time in the whole episode we've gone through about 53 minutes of dreamy weemy because that's a thing now apparently oh that sounded terrible when i said that <laughs> and so then we get them all back we get the mystery of she ticks for shona ticks forgive dave and everybody spends months speculating on that because she's going to be the new companion, obviously. That's what we all thought this time last year. Well, not quite this time last year. Like, for about two weeks after the episode ended, it's all like, yeah, let's have Shona as the companion because she's not just Rose Tyler Mark II. She's an amazing original new character. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good thing she wasn't the companion. She didn't need to be. It would have been just a pointless waste of time. We didn't need a third companion anyway. It worked fine as it was because Rose was brilliant. So, but yeah, then we get to that ending. Clara hangs around too long on the sleigh. And suddenly she becomes 62 years old. Or is no, she, no, she must be 80. She said, how long has it been? It's been 62 years. She's like 28 or something. So she was 90, basically. With her slightly bad, terrible, prosthetic, old person face. Which really just didn't look that great. I mean, if Jenny Coleman looks like anything like that when she's old, I'll be surprised. I'm sure in 50 years time, people will, actually, if anybody still cares about Doctor Who, in 50 years time they'll put out the comparison shots of old Clara versus old Jenna Coleman and that'll probably be an interesting how badly they failed on that but then who knows what we'll be in 50 years time um, anyway um, so yeah Clara's old she's gonna leave the TARDIS it's 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 a, it's a tragic end which would have not made sense for her character really at all Although before it comes to that, I did like the little parallel they had with Time of the Doctor, where you have the Doctor helping Clara to pull the cracker when we had it the other way round when we had Old Doctor in Matt Smith's last story the year before. And I thought oh, I really like that sort of continuity style they use in Doctor Who. To sort of just giving it a, giving it a little nod back to something that we had previously without going over the top. It made sense in that episode, it made sense in both episodes, so I thought that was a nice little moment. But yeah, because of course, coming into this episode, all the speculation had been, is Jenna Coleman going to leave? Is this her last episode? We had no idea. Jenna Coleman was just, because she could, she said no, because all the tabloids said, oh yeah, she's leaving, it's the end, bye. And actually, she probably was, but she changed her mind, because Peter Crowley's so amazing. Capaldi, sorry. I need, to, I need to start saying his name right. But yeah, because he's so awesome, she stayed. And so that's probably why the tabloids all got hold of, she's leaving, because she actually was going to leave. And so then we come into this episode, 
is she gonna leave? And then she wakes up, she's old, surely this it's all sad music. Well, there we go, that's such a good track. Why they removed the choirs on the soundtrack, but off sidetracked. So then she's gonna leave, this is the end. We have all that sort of nice moment about great continuity there. She where she learned to fly a plane after she sort of was crashing in a plane in her first ever episode. Nice nod back to that. She taught in every country in Europe because why not? I guess how would that link in? Well she wanted to go like the 101 places to see or something so she probably wanted to go to lots of different countries when she was younger. And so I'd, this may all just be complete nonsense that I'm saying right now but it might have been sort of she liked teaching and she wanted to go to all these different countries from when she was young so she went and thought well yeah I'll go teach in Moldova and Romania Poland and all these other random European countries I'm not convinced she did she probably she Clara lies all the time you have to remember so it's very possible she was lying there and uh, and then Santa appears and and Every Clara hater despairs. Not me, but every Clara hater despairs, and then it's like, no, we're gonna get another series of her. And all the Clara fans are like, yeah, we got another series of Jenna Coleman and Clara, and it's gonna be excellent. It's amazing, and well, it turned out to be amazing. But yeah, and so she stays on, and the Doctor comes back. They all wake up again, and we're finally probably back in the real world, although Tangerine because more fat, because anyway, in a minute, and. So then, they go off together. It's all happy days. It's all back to normal. We've gone through this sort of... They've made up. They've kissed and made up, if you like. After all their sort of trials and tribulations of Series 8, where Clara just doesn't like the Doctor that much anymore. And then they leave each other at the end of Series 8, and then they come back together here. Then surely Clara's gonna die. But actually, no, she's not an old woman because that wouldn't have worked with her character, because why would she suddenly sort of... She was always... Series 8 Clara was always trying to be in control, wasn't she? Because Series 9 Clara was reckless Clara, if you like. And that's why the ending sort of made sense, or come to that eventually. Well, not this video. It'll be a fair few weeks before we get to face the Raven and Hellbent. When I'm sure there'll be lots of discussions about Clara's final exit, but here... She, it just doesn't seem right that she would have just sort of... But I guess... It could have worked because she sort of would have lost... She was denied her... Because she wanted to stay with the Doctor. Well... This, it's, it's a difficult one, this one, because... You feel like the ending could and couldn't work at the same time, because we know but it wasn't the ending, so... But you kind of feel like, sort of... She wasn't that good a friend with the Doctor in Series 8, although she probably didn't want to actually leave him. She wasn't sort of like Series 9 Clara where she couldn't bear to live without him or anything. And so you could, it was more believable in Series 8 that she could have gone and lived a normal life as old Clara sort of did. And you can also look at it sort of the tragic side of she was denied the opportunity to stay with the Doctor for longer and she just had to live that mundane life out. And so, yeah, it's, it's sort of, it's an interesting one because it could have been a Clara ending. Well, every there's so many Clara endings now. But that could have sort of finished a character, but I think it was better that it didn't. Well, we wouldn't have got Series 9 in the way it happened without Clara staying, so I'm pretty pleased that she did. It's favourite companion anyway, so. So, yeah, it's, it's, let me know your thoughts. Do you think that should have, that was the right, should she have left there? Not, well. Just be, don't say just I didn't like the character so I was hoping she would have gone away as soon as possible but if you feel like that was the right that would have been a better ending for her than what we've got in series 9 and it wasn't worth us staying in series 9 then do let me know if you think that or if you do agree with me or whatever let me know just what you think about that sort of possible Clara exit if you like and so well that's pretty much it they walk they run downstairs go off like a couple of kids into the TARDIS ready to fly off and have lots of adventures and whatnot. And we see the tangerine, which was just Moffat saying, Inception here, Inception, you know the, the spindle thing at the end of Inception just keeps spinning to represent they're in a dream or something, and I feel like that's just Moffat's nod to that by sticking a tangerine in the end to say, oh, maybe Santa's really still here, or maybe that tangerine was just on his windowsill anyway, and it was just complete coincidence. 
clearly it wasn't a dream, so pretty much just coincidence, but it was a nice little nod. And I would have liked it if they'd had a major twist, because I remember Moffat talked about the old um, end of heaven sent cliffhanger was going to be a whopper, you won't see this coming. I was kind of hoping it'd be like, they've been dreaming for the whole series. Yes, it's so stereotypical, but it would have just been quite entertaining to watch the fandom like collapse. When it's like, the whole of series nine didn't actually happen, they were all dreaming and the Doctor and Clara were still sort of dying throughout the whole of series nine with some dream crabs on their faces. And I feel like that would just be a nice little twist, but it was a little bit much for more fair, I think, so it kind of was pretty better that they didn't do it. And then we get the, the Doctor and Clara will return in The Magician's Apprentice. And I will return for a review of The Magician's Apprentice. Because that title makes so much sense, doesn't it? <laughs> so yeah, there you go. That's my not very good review of Last Christmas. I mean, <laughs> this was a pretty poor video, frankly. I apologise if you've just put yourself through this torture of a video. Feel free to dislike it, because I don't think it was very good. But what the heck, I might as well upload it, because content for the channel and that what whatnot. I really want to just sort of keep doing these videos, expand it, make them better. I want to do a few more comedy videos as well, sort of looking at the more comedic side of Doctor Who and maybe playing some of the terrible Doctor Who games that we've had over the years. I mean, some of them are just absolutely terrible. But that's for later videos and whatnot. So there you go, that's pretty much it. Last Christmas I gave that an 8.1, 2, 8.2 out of 10 I think. Fairly similar to Mistress Apprentice actually. So I thought it was a really sort of good, interesting base on the siege episode with the right ending. <laughs> and lots of interest, relatively interesting characters. Danny Ping coming back probably wasn't the greatest. Actually, maybe I should knock it down a little bit because Danny Ping was in it to an 8. Yeah, 8.0 or 0, whatever, I think, because it had Danny Ping. And any episode gets put down by Danny Ping, really. So, so yeah, that's it. I'll be back, hopefully this time next week, for a review of The Magician's Apprentice. I've also got, fairly soon, um, a sort of retrospective review of Doctor Who Series 1. Um, that'll be coming up two, three weeks' time. That'll sort of take a sort of take a week off from the Series 9 reviews, because I'm going to do those all for the next three, four months or something each week. Gonna, well, some of the videos will be coming out like two months after I actually recorded them, but whatever. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, like the video, check out my Twitter, follow me at EMSDW44, and if you're interested you can see all my Peter meeting Peter Capaldi stuff, there's lots of pictures, the video clip from this intro of course, my epic intro, which is just amazing, and you can see all the stuff about that there, and what's coming up in my next videos, and anything like that, so follow me if you like. I'm Elliot, I'm Mears Productions, and I will see you next time for another Doctor Who review.